Chapter 3, Section 5 Process Decomposition We have seen various elements that we can use to describe processes. We discussed events, activities, gateways. We have seen that pools and swim lanes can be used to represent different actors. And we have come to learn that we can model business objects for the process. If we include all these elements for describing a specific process, we will see that models very quickly become very complex. We can handle that complexity by decomposing bigger processes into smaller sub-processes. Let's revisit our example. We have seen that a purchase order is received and then the stock availability is checked. Here we now have more fine granular activities described. So if the product is not in stock, we check raw material availability. If certain raw materials are missing, we request raw materials from supplier 1 and or supplier 2. With these raw materials, we can manufacture our product. Once the manufacturing of the product is done, we can confirm the order, emit the invoice, get the shipping address and ship the product, receive the payment and archive the order. This process is already quite complex. We can make it simpler. We see that this part of the process shown in green is related to acquiring raw materials. We see that this right hand part of the process at the bottom is concerned with shipping and invoicing. These blocks of the process can be shown as sub-processes. When we do that, we can hide the details of these acquiring raw material and ship and invoice process activities and the model becomes more focused on the overall flow. Here we have put all the respective events and activities and gateways into boxes. These are activities that have details with them. We can collapse them and the process becomes easier to read. At any stage we are interested in the details, we can look at the sub-process. Representation-wise this looks as follows. We replace these blocks of activities with corresponding activities. Here we have now an activity acquire raw materials and an activity ship an invoice. The fact that there are further details associated with these activities is highlighted by the little plus sign at the lower part of each of these activities. This means we can click on this plus sign in a modeling tool and the modeling tool will show us the corresponding sub-process. This principle of decomposition is used for managing process architectures. Remember, a process architecture defines different levels of granularity at which we describe processes. The typical way to connect activities at one level with the activities at a more fine granular is to define sub-processes. We see this here for an example that refers to the SCORE reference model for supply chain activities. On level 3 there is an activity that is called Receive and Validate Order. A corresponding sub-process on level 4 describes this activity in more detail as a separate process. 
Again, an activity on level 4, check credit, is decomposed and described on more detail on level 5. Decomposition is not only applied between different BPMN models. Remember that we represented processes in an abstract way in the process landscape model. This very abstract modeling is often referred to as value chain modeling. And you see here a value chain that may be part of a process landscape model and a core process of a corresponding company. That value chain describes product development, is followed by marketing, is followed by sales processing, is followed by production planning, is followed by customer care. You see the plus signs on the element of product development and sales processing. This plus sign indicates that there are more fine granular detailed processes described for these process blocks. This can be done step by step to connect the high level overarching view of the process landscape with the fine granular descriptions of various processes.